What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the TSV Sports Show. I got my guys, Marco Milani, Steven Risotto, Alvin Chang, and Anthony Rivia. And we'll be joined by Jasper Lindsay in a little bit. I'm your host, by the way, Daniel Archuleta. We'll hop in right away with the NFL. The 49ers are back in the win column. It seemed like they went the entire month of November without a win. And in the final days of the month, they come away with a 23 to 20 victory over the Rams. Nick Mullins, two back-to-back, you know, comeback drives late in the fourth quarter. And Robbie Gold sealing it with a couple field goals down the stretch. And they come out on top and at five and six, still, still alive with a month left to go, a couple weeks left. Still alive in the NFC playoff picture, the West might be the West might be um, in favor of Seattle now, but with an extra wild card spot, Marco, is there any chance that the Niners can cling on to that seventh seed and possibly make some noise later late in the season here? Oh, of course, there's always a chance. There is there is always a chance. Debo's healthy now. Ayuk Ayuk will come off the COVID nineteen list in just a few weeks, hopefully. Um, so their receiving core will be back. Mostert's back. Wilson's back. Sherman's back. Verrett's still playing at the top of his game. Kevin Givens is is very good. Javon Kinlaw's uh, turning out to be amazing. Oh, by the way, congratulations on your first career touchdown off a beautiful pick. Um, but there is definitely a chance. There is most definitely a chance. As long as Mullins doesn't throw any more picks, which knock on wood, but um, yeah. Yeah, he needs, to, he needs to guide the ship as much as he can. I know Kyle Shanahan spoke to the media earlier this morning on a Tuesday, and he just came out saying that, you know, he's having a little bit of optimism about, about Jimmy Garoppolo, George Kittle possibly coming back. Just unfortunately, no D Ford, um, no Weston Richburg, and possibly no Ronald Blair for the rest of the season, but at least knowing that if they could at least win these next three games, looking ahead towards Buffalo, that's possibly the game of the season right there to let let you know, like if how all in are are these players, but if they could at least just tread water, if Mullins can just make, if he could play the same way he did against the Rams, just limiting the turnovers, you know, they have all the chance in the world to possibly make a whole lot of noise because they do have that favorable schedule after Buffalo with Washington and Dallas on the road. Turn it over to Steven now. What what was your takeaways from the Niners-Rams game? Yeah, I'm going to echo kind of what Marco mentioned um, and kind of what you mentioned too. Nick Mullins just kind of has to be – he doesn't even have to be a difference maker. He just kind of has to be, a, um, you know, not just – not an antagonist, but more of just a – He's got to be there, and, you know, even if he doesn't do anything, I guess that's kind of a win. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like what Marco said about everybody's – you know, not everybody, but, you know, Sherman's back, Debo's back. I mean, Debo was outstanding. I think he was target, targeted like 13 times, caught 11 passes, missing tackles all over the place on him. Um, but it was good to see Richard Sherman back. I know he caught, uh, caught an interception. Um, but Jared Goff, just whenever he faces the 49ers – uh, the term that I was seeing was deer in headlights. So that that's kind of interesting. Um, and especially since he's from the Bay Area. Um, and as you mentioned before, Robbie Gold, always doing his thing. Um, very clutch down the stretch there for the Niners. So, you know, the defense is going to have to be important here uh, for the 49ers if they want to clinch a spot. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and then, you know, just now – you know, no more Santa Clara for them, no more Levi Stadium. They take off tomorrow to Arizona to practice where the Cardinals take care of their training camp year in and year out. Just another another obstacle for them to get through here, along with all the other players on IR. But it seems like they're ready for it and they're ready to go to war for the rest of the rest of the, the month of December. Uh let's talk <laughs> Chiefs Bucks next. And what else more can you really say about Patrick Mahomes? He's really taken the MVP race by the horns right now. He threw for 462, three touchdowns. Tyreek Hill is his main man. Had over 200 yards 
200 receiving yards just in the first quarter. Like, that's unheard of. And Tom Brady just – he didn't look the part in the first half, came on strong in the second, but just overall wasn't enough. Back to Marco, what – what more can we say about Mahomes and just the entire Chiefs offense? Punch their ticket to the Super Bowl, honestly. I think if unless something insane happens, which this is the NFL, could could happen, could not. But punch their ticket. Mahomes is a perennial MVP. He has a great receiving core around him. He has a great running back game behind him. His defense does what they need to do so he can rest and he can and they're not tired and stuff but yeah I think Mahomes is is an MVP I think I think they can make some noise yeah no doubt it's every every week we just seem like he passes these just small tests to him that aren't that most other quarterbacks in the AFC have trouble with and look at Lamar Jackson when he went up against New England. Like, that was – everyone thought, okay, just get past this small little New England game. But, you know, in the rain, on the road, couldn't do it. Now look at Mahomes, like, back-to-back weeks against, you know, Vegas and, you know, going toe-to-toe with Derek Carr. Now, you you know, they're having him go back on the road again. Back to Tampa, you know, there's there's fans there. I mean, they have fans in Arrowhead also, but – just a small little thing there that, you know, isn't always deal, dealing with this this season. But time and time again, he comes through. And Tyreek Hill, he's, he's just – what else more? Like, he's always getting past his defenders. It's hard to have him in one-on-one coverage, especially with no safety help. Like, you're just asked for it at that point. And then even Travis Kelsey, he's always coming through time and time again as Mahomes' safety blanket. And – like you said, they really are built for this this playoff run. And, you know, we, one one more little question for, for anyone here. Are the Steelers any any threat to the Chiefs at all? Anyone could take that one. Maybe. That's all I'll say that for, to that. Maybe. Um, Chase Claypool is becoming a great receiver. Um, then the defense is just firing on all cylinders. We'll see what they do. Wednesday now because that was uh, postponed again because of NBC wanted to do the uh, Rockefeller Center lighting instead of football. But what what are you going to do? Yeah, I guess the tree lighting is a whole lot more important than possibly the one of the best AFC rivalries that there is. Um, No Jasper yet. We'll wait on him. But let's turn now to some college hoops. The season did get started last Wednesday. And it, it's just nice to see some sort of basketball on right now. It's good to know that they're able to pull it off. So hopefully the NF, the NBA will be able to pull it off as well. Let's turn it over to Alvin. Who who are your teams to look forward to? Uh, I know you're going to talk about some women's um, women's college basketball, but who are your who are your teams that you're looking forward to this this upcoming season? So today I want to focus on Pac-12 conference. Uh, for women's basketball and especially focus on Stanford women's basketball and Oregon women's basketball too. So as we know, Oregon women's basketball won the Pac-12 tournament champion last year because they have Sabrina Ionescu, the most talented guard I have ever seen in the last five years. Sabrina currently played for, uh, for New York Liberty in WNBA. After Ionescu graduated from UO, this year, they still be very competitive in Pac-12. Uh, I want to point out a senior center, Lydia Giomi. So this will be her last season playing for for University of Oregon. In the first game, they play uh, against Portland last night. Giomi has 15 points and 13 rebounds. So as a veteran in college basketball, she can lead her team to defend the Pac-12 champions. So next, I want to talk about Stanford women's basketball. So as far as I know, Stanford won 13 times on Pac-12 conference. However, in this season, uh, the team looks strong because they hired a freshman forward called 
Cameron Brink. I don't know if you guys know Cameron Brink. So Cameron Brink was born into a basketball family. Her parents, Greg Brink, and and her mom, Michelle Bainbrink, was played for Virginia Tech in college basketball. Michelle was college roommate with Soyo Curry, and Greg was teammate with Del Curry, so which is Steph Curry's parents. So oftentimes in off season, Cameron will train together with Steph Curry. And talking about Cameron Brink, I think she will play in college basketball just for a year, then she would turn to play in WNBA. Before college, she was playing for Team USA since under 17. Compared to the traditional four player, I think, I, I mean, I call Cameron Brink as an um, all-round player. So when people say she's a forward, uh, you know, she can do a lot of things beside a forward player. For example, she has a good step back jumper, and also she can play the paint. I, well, to be honest, I have a high expectation for her, and I believe she can lead Stanford women's basketball to win a tournament champion again in this season. Yeah, thank you, Alvin. It's always nice to get a little bit of mix in between the women's and men's game. And, you know, now we'll talk about the guys a little bit. The annual Champions Classic is tonight, Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, Michigan State. A little bit different this year because obviously teams can't be traveling as much as they would prefer to. So that Duke game is in North Carolina. Let's hear from Anthony for the first time today. Any teams, any players you're looking out for this college basketball season? Uh, yeah, well, I'm excited for this season. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a little difficult with COVID. As we've seen already, many games have been postponed, canceled, uh, sadly because players or coaches have a positive. But, I mean, we have two exciting games tonight, like you said, Kentucky versus Kansas. Uh, Kentucky actually coming off of a loss against the University of Richmond, which – was shocking with their roster having, I want to say, three or four five-star recruits. Uh, one I want to point out would be Devin Askew out of modern day. Um, I used to watch a lot of his games when he was in high school. Solid point guard, solid scorer. Uh, he's good at finding the open man. And the best part about him, he's physical. He likes to play. So I think he'll be able to lead this Wildcats team to a good amount of wins, possibly even a championship, seeing how the season will unfold. They have a lot of competition. I also like Gonzaga Bulldogs. Uh, they picked up freshman Jalen Suggs. He is a, a beast. Uh, out of high school, he was playing. He was starting um, quarterback, all-star, and he was also the all-star of the basketball team. He's a dual threat, athletic point guard who could just run the ball. Um, Gonzaga also run by head coach Mark Few, who's always had a, a successful years over there. So that would be an exciting team to watch. Um, Pac-12, I want to go talk about Cal for a little bit. Uh, I don't know many, much of their roster, but I saw that they went ahead and picked up uh, a guard freshman, Matt Bradley, um, out of San Bernardino, California. I think that he will be a great asset to the team. Like I said, just kind of like similar play style to Devin Askew, very physical point guard who could get the team going, you know, if they're having a bad game or – if they're struggling on the downfall, you know, he could easily pick them up with his spirit. So um, a lot of exciting games tonight. Uh, it'll be an exciting season, see how it unfolds. Hopefully teams can stay healthy. Uh, I want to see all these matchups go as planned and uh, a successful season. Yeah, something to look forward to on Saturday. Um, early game, 10, 10 a.m., you have, you know, number one, Gonzaga facing off against number two, Baylor. Very interesting. It's very early, but like you said, Mark Few, Never count him out, even though he is in the West Coast Conference. You know, his only real legitimate opponents there are BYU and St. Mary's every year. But, you know, it takes a lot for a player and, you know, a coach to always, you know, always year in and year out put in the work and always put it, give out results. Not always what he not always what he wants come tournament time. You know, never can never get at least to um top spot, but Gonzaga, another another year of just pure dominance out here on the West Coast. All right, so unfortunately, um, Jasper Lindsay will not be joining us today. Um, he's caught in some traffic if you have seen the past two shows. 
Um, so we'll end, we'll end the show with this. Uh, we will, we'll try something new. Um, 60 seconds for each of for each of our guys to see what they uh, have on their mind. And we'll start off with Marco as I grab my phone here, very low budget here on the TSV sports show. So I'll set the, uh, I'll set the timer here, hold it up to the screen and Marco, whenever you're ready, your time starts right now. For my 60 seconds, I want to talk about the Sharks. Come on, y'all. They got to sign some people. We The last sign we, signing we made was only a few weeks ago, and it was Curtis Gabriel from the Philadelphia Flyers, and he's mostly an AHL signing. We've, we ha- need forward depth. We need defensive depth. But Doug Wilson hasn't done anything. Obviously, he thinks we're good. We're not good. We haven't made a Stanley Cup in two years. Excuse me, not excuse me, not even two years. But we need to find somebody like Andreas Antonese from the, formerly of the Red Wings, uh, Jan Ruda, the defenseman of the champion Tampa Bay Lightning. Come on, Doug Wilson, you gotta start doing some things, man. Because I'm sitting here watching the TSN. Uh, free agency signings and I don't see that Sharks logo come on we need some depth let's get let's get it over with dude there we go um Steven if you would like to go next uh your time starts right now all right I want to talk about minor league baseball because major league baseball wants to get rid of like 40 affiliates of uh minor league baseball teams this is stupid. There's no reason to do it. It's completely unnecessary. MLB does not want the interest of the younger fan. They only care about money. They don't realize how much these minor league teams are important to the cities and the economies. There's a million people that don't have a big league team nearby. So, you know, professional baseball is their focus. It's their life. It's a scam that they're trying to get rid of these teams. Uh, let's see what else do I want to say. MLB never does anything for minor league baseball. There's been a pay problem in the minor leagues for a while. Nothing's been done about it. Baseball keeps losing and will continue to keep losing good athletes to other sports if they don't step it up. So, um, yeah, they, they got to start promoting baseball everywhere and not taking the teams away because that's stupid. So that's my 60 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I saw a small little thing there about how the Nationals wanted to take away the Giants' AA affiliate out of Richmond, Virginia, but they said it, it wasn't going to be able to work because the ballpark um, for the Flying Squirrels isn't um, adequate for a AAA um, organization. Thank you, Good. Stephen. Um, Anthony, you're next. Uh, your 60 seconds starts right now. Perfect. Uh, I just want to talk about, you know, a training camp coming up for the NBA. I'm excited. I want to talk to the Warriors. I'm excited they picked up Kent Bazemore uh, to fill in for injured Clay. It'll be a great look. Uh, James Wiseman, obviously a big. I love that. I think that, you know, with the remaining time we have until the season starts, I think the Warriors need to maybe try and look for another big man, a veteran big man to possibly give, you know, Damian Lee, Looney, as well as, you know, Looney's he's been in league for a while, but I think he could still use some mentorship. Uh, as well as Wiseman, I think that'd be good for those big men. So I think Lake and Myers need to make some some adjustments. Obviously, picking up Brad Wambo was a great pickup for us. Uh, so with the season starting on the 22nd, wanting to get in the Christmas games before, you know, trying to get their money in, I'm excited to see how the how the Warriors will unfold the season with uh, all the new pickups. Yeah, everyone, everyone's really waiting for when the schedule will be released. Sometime this week is what we're hearing. Preseason schedule already out. The Warriors will have two nationally televised games, one on ESPN, one on TNT. It's Finally, let's hear from Alvin. I'll go, obviously, but let's hear from Alan. Alvin, your 60 seconds starts now. So I want to go out. I, was, I want to point out for NLB, so especially for Trevor Bauer. So as everybody discussed where Trevor Bauer will go in, the, in this offseason, and people say he probably will go Yankees. But I don't think so because Yankees uh, already have Gary Cole. Well, they probably want to uh, get Trevor Bauer because, um, you know, the, the A's roster will be good. And then I would also, you know, Charlie Morton from the Rays, he traded to the, to the uh, Atlanta Braves. And right now, um, the, there's a lot of experts say that uh, Blake Snell also will get traded. So since the um, 
the Rays didn't get a World Series this year. I think if they trade Blake, Blake now, the whole team is going to rebuild the franchise and everything is going to rebuild in the in the next season. That's right. Trevor Bauer, just, I mean, typical MLB free agency, just offseason in general, everything moves slow like a snail. You know, what else more can we say? I, you know, Yasiel Puig, another name out there, recently, you know, signed with Bauer's agent, Rachel Luba. And we'll see where he goes also. All right, so for my 60 seconds, I want to talk about, you know, Wonder Boy Christian Pulisic finally back from injury over this past weekend. He didn't, you know, he didn't start against Tottenham, but came off the bench, provided just something that Chelsea lacks. And I'm not much of a Chelsea guy myself, never really have been. I can't really say I have a favorite European team because, you know, I grew up watching all these leagues. But the one thing I see from Chelsea week in and week out looking to see Pulisic play is they don't have what he provides from another player, especially on the left side of the attacking mindset that they want to have. And every week from what I see from Frank Lampard is he wants to keep giving guys different rotations and different switches on the field. That's not what Pulisic is all about, especially when he's working on the left-hand side. Two important games this weekend, Champions League tomorrow against Valencia, Saturday against Leeds United. Let's get let's get Pulisic on the score sheet and first off in the lineup as well because they will need him. And You talked over I, your time, you lose. Yeah, <laughs> that's, why I went, that's why I went last, unfortunately. But thanks for joining us on the TSB Sports Show. I want to thank my guys, Marco, Steven, Alan, and Anthony. Another solid week. Final month of December, we got a couple shows left coming up on the TSV Sports Show, and then we'll pack it in, obviously, you know, for a little winter break. Uh, thanks for joining us. Make sure to follow the Skyline View on Twitter and Instagram, and we will see you next week on the TSV Sports Show.